Well, thank you everybody for being here today. Um, if you don't know who I am, I'm David Palmer. I go by a guy called the Leo King. I've created a character out of being a Leo for a living. I do horoscopes, lectures, uh, I do a lot of crazy stuff. But um, the main point of today is the new age of astrology. But it's not just about the new age of astrology. It really is all about this new age. Everybody throws around the new age like it's, oh, it's the new age. But I think that everybody needs to know what it's really about. And the new age is really about knowing where we're at in the cosmos. Because when we know where we're at in the cosmos, we know what's going on. What's above is also below. And so today, I want to truly go into understanding what astrology is, what this new age is really about, and knowing that when we follow the stars, when we understand where we're at galactically, we understand who we are as people, we understand what the earth is, we understand what we're going through. And I'd like to just start us off with a quick prayer and let everybody know that I ask the universe to come in and just guide us in our highest light and always bring us nothing but love and support and to let all of our angels and all of our guides guide us in the most beautiful journey and to just bring nothing but love and light into this room. And so it is. And astrology has been misconstrued for so long by it always being horoscopes or it always being like, What's your sun sign? And unfortunately, that, well, it's, that's great. But unfortunately, it really doesn't do it justice at all. And so I actually hate the term astrology, or I hate calling myself an astrologer, because people look at me like, oh, so you know my horoscope, you know? <laughs> but the last thing in an astrologer's life is the horoscope. That's the last thing we even care about. The first thing that a true astrologer cares about is understanding where we're at in the story, where we're at of the evolution of consciousness, and that's what astrology was for. All of our ancients used astrology to understand where we were in that great clock. And so 2012 was no joke. Literally, it really was the shift point, it's called. And the last three years since then has been a crazy, neurotic, psychological, emotional battle storm that everybody has had to go through because when the light flickers on in a room like imagine if the, when, the, when this room is dark and then the light turns on it just doesn't turn on there's that flickering like at Walmart you know when it's like turn on all the lights like it's a neurotic weird lighting up so when we talk about the new age and all this light coming well it's coming from such a dark place first and there's a lot to light up. There's a lot that the human body, the soul, the mind has to go through. So the new age was this exciting point for people, yet they came into a crazy psychological, emotional, mental, spiritual battle. And I want to describe why that was, what's happening, and how to kind of go through it as well. Because really you've just entered down the rabbit hole basically. Because we as a species have never been here. The human body really wasn't made for this shift point. Because if you think about where we've been as consciousness forever, if we were to start at the beginning of humans that we know it and where we're at now, there is so much time and space that goes before we hit a shift point. So the human body is just like, kind of like laying on the couch, like I'm so used to this. <laughs> but then we get to this point and it's like, oh my God, I've never been here before. And so everything becomes alien, everything becomes weird. And it's funny because we like to look at aliens of up there, whether they're aliens on other planets or alien spaceships. But the truth is, is that the alien is the human that doesn't know what it is. <laughs> Think about that. <laughs> that is what alien is. We don't know who we are as a species. We don't know who we are as humanity. We have no effing clue. Ask anybody, why are we here? I have no idea, man. <laughs> We're lost, we don't know what's going on. We have no idea. And the only way to know that is to look outside of the shoebox we live in. And so, I use today as the new age of astrology because everybody's throwing around the term new age. Yet, 
I dated a girl recently who came into my, 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 uh, my bathroom and was like, you're using the wrong shampoo and you're using the wrong lotion and oh my God, you're not new age anymore. I'm like, are you effing kidding me right now? Because that has nothing to do with the new age, unfortunately. We could eat as great as we want to eat and I'm not saying it's not bad. But a human body like a jailbird, right? A guy at a gym in the jail getting himself pumped up who will never leave the jail is almost like kind of like a weird analogy because it's like, well, you're not going anywhere, dude. It's almost like everybody's getting so high vibrational to not even know where the hell they're going, if that makes sense. So the important aspect is to know where you're going. And that's what galactic consciousness really is, is and what the new age is. It's about understanding where you are in the galaxy. Hence, space, NASA, all this stuff is helping us get there as a human species. But we've known this forever. The ancients knew this since the beginning. So we have to go back to remembering our galactic consciousness again. Because once you understand where you're at in the universe, Earth becomes so much easier. Because then you know where you're at, you know what's going on, and you're like, oh shit, yeah, this is shifting, so I'm okay now. I know where I'm, I know where I'm at in the story. And so if you know 2012 at all, 2012 is like a really weird point in the galaxy that I'm going to describe people and, and how to understand that. But to kind of, instead of throw us all the way there first, let's just start back that we're going down the rabbit hole again. And that to get to astrology and to get here, I bet you everybody in this room has already gone down the rabbit hole a little bit or we all wouldn't be here. You know, we all said no to conventional humanity that we've seen in society and everything and the way to be. And we all said, F that, screw that, we're going down this hole. There's something deeper here that I need to go. Because Alice left the book at the tree and said, F this, we're going down the hole, little kitty. You know? <laughs> and that's all of us. That's all of, and the only way to get to astrology is you have to get through all the bias that you're crazy. You have to literally, you know, you have to. I mean, there was people down there at my booth being like, well, the gravitational pull, and I'm like, I'm going to put that whole thing to shame at the end of this, but um, you know, never be afraid to go down that hole in your life, whether it's astrology, whether it's anything. And I think that's what I want to spread the love in here today is I know everybody in this room has no fear to go down that hole and to really see what's going on because human existence needs to go down the hole. We need to lose ourselves in a psychological, crazy, weird, emotional battle. And if you're going through that in your life, that means you're on the right track, believe it or not, right now. <laughs> that means that you're, you're, you're literally opening up your soul that's never been that open. The human body we all are embedded in has never been able to go through this. That's why the Mayans showed it. That, you know, it, I mean, we're a human body going through one story to another story in a galactic story. It's a whole different book. It's a whole different book. We're being alive, being transferred onto those pages. Like, you know what that must feel like? Oh, and then that moment of going from <laughs> the other book and then sticking there. Oh my gosh, don't even go there with that feeling. So just know we're all in that in-between place right now, which is the no man's land too. It also is the rabbit hole because she doesn't know what it all means still. And that's okay. To understand what astrology is, believe it or not, it has nothing to do with the planets. Everybody always thinks that, oh my gosh, so when I look up and I see Jupiter, yeah, we're paying attention to that. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but astrologers really could care less about that. The main thing that we care about is if you ever remember maps, this is like third grade stuff. Believe it or not, we're gonna go back to third grade, but we have the equator, right? We have something called the sound wave, and we have these things called the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. The sun's path in the west, or in the north, always right. Here's Aries, March 20th, equal day, equal night on the planet. Here's September 23rd, equal day, equal night on the planet, when the sun is at equal day, equal night. But if we rise in the northern hemisphere, by here, June 21st is Cancer, when the sun hits the Tropic of Cancer. That's why if you're June 21st, you're a Cancer. And then it falls, into Libra, where it hits September 23rd, and then it comes all the way back down to here, December 21st, when it's Christmas for us here. But guess what? If you're in Australia, you are getting your buns toasted. <laughs> so this is what we pay attention to, because this never changes. I don't care if the Earth wobbles from an earthquake in Japan or whatever. 
Our view might change, but what never changes is the sun and the earth's relationship. No matter how much we change, no matter how this thing gets thrown off, some reason the earth and the sun have this relationship that on every March 20th, equal day, equal night, on every June 21st, even if we were to go back to 2500 BC, you're still a Cancer. You're still a Capricorn. You're still a Libra. You're still an Aries. You're still an awesome Leo. You know? <laughs> Sorry, I had to throw that one last. That's what we do. Some people who have watched my lectures have seen this slide, but, it, but if you haven't seen it, this always inspires people. So, believe it or not, Leonardo da Vinci was an awesome guy who was a big astrologer, and he made this painting to describe the zodiac signs, not Jesus Christ, unfortunately, everybody, because Jesus Christ really is the sun and the understanding of the sun's path. But if you see here on every sign, and I don't, we don't have a lot of time because I have a lot of slides today. But here's Aries, the strong masculine man looking at the beginning of the chart. There's the Taurus who's very valuable and everything. And here's the Gemini with the two hands. Here's the Cancer with the crab, you know, uh, the knife to cut the crab open. Here's the Leo who's standing strong on the table with his arm. He's the only one with an arm on the table and holding anything. Here's the Virgo. You can see her. I mean, it's pretty simple to get. Here's Jesus the Sun. Here's Libra holding up the balance beams. Here's the Scorpio saying, F you motherfucker, I know what you just said. <laughs> Here's Sagittarius right here, I know everything. <laughs> Here's Capricorn knowing the way. If we don't go up the mountain, we're gonna all not get there. <laughs> Here's the Aquarius. We don't even know what he's doing, what he said, and where the hell was he for the last 20 years? <laughs> Where did, who's that guy? And I always say something about Aquarius. Aquariuses look weird because they look at life from over here, right? They don't, they're not like all of us who see life like this. So here's this, how about this? Age of Aquarius, we're gonna talk about it today. That's what a new age is, we're shifting ages and we'll get there. But age of Aquarius means we all have to see it from over here. So it makes life even weirder. And I can't forget the Pisces, sorry. The, the elder one who knows everything and is holding the fish. Because of the fish. Anyway, so fun, just so everybody knows. And you can rebuttal that all you want, but I'm sorry. It's a little bit too overwhelming when you look at it. Especially the positions, especially the three segments of the spring, summer, fall, and winter, and what they're doing. You gotta bring characters to the signs, you know? If you don't bring characters to the sign, you just read a book, you're never gonna like astrology. You gotta act them out, you gotta have fun with them. So, the universe is like this. Now, I'm a big destiny person, and I think free will is kind of an illusion, I'm gonna be honest with you all. And the reason why I say that is because the universe is playing a beautiful tone, a beautiful music. It's playing this awesome synchronistic like, orchestra. And on Earth, we have the free will to either link up with that, or B, be an egotistical maniac and be like, no, I can do whatever the hell I want on this life. So we could either all day be like, God's playing jazz. You know what? I'm getting my jazz shoes on right now. And I'm going to go jazz it up. Or we could be like, no, I'm going to go do that punk metal show and eat a bunch of blood and do that. Which, hey, if the gods playing punk metal drink blood, do it. But I don't know about really wanting to play that music because it could just sound like crap. And that's usually what happens in people's life, is they're not aligned with their sole destiny and purpose of why they're here. You were here for a reason. You came here. You didn't have an AK-47 being like, get in this body. You literally were like, I'm coming. I want to come, and I'm doing this, 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 and then I'm going to set myself up to do this, and then I'm going to go through this experience because that'll be great, and blah, 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 and I'm going to get in the body and let's go. And this is a life about remembering, because if we know what we're supposed to do in this life as human beings, we're supposed to remember. We're not supposed to just come down here and be like, I'm here to experience, I don't know. That really doesn't allow you to fulfill the synchronicity of how the universe works, because if you look at the planets, they all are perfect. They all go perfect. 
Jupiter can't be like, I want to go jump across the sun and be on that side. <laughs> Takes him six years to get over there. He can't just be like, fuck this, I'm out of here, guys. I'm getting out of line. That's not how the universe works. So humans are, in my opinion, I don't want to call us retarded, but we are because we actually think that we can jump the line and go wherever we want. And imagine if humanity all just knew its purpose and knew why it was here and all just started to be like the planets and go like, I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to do this. This is what I came here to do. Imagine how beautiful and silent that we get back to that silence that we're all trying to reach through the shampoos we're changing in our life. <laughs> 2012 Galactic Alignment. And it is hot in here. The sun goes around our galaxy, just like the Earth goes around the sun. So the sun has to even itself wait its time before it can shine where it wants to shine. Unfortunately, the sun has been in the shithole for the last 12,000 years. <laughs> we were all born in the shithole. Uh, but the good thing is we all just popped our heads out. <gasps> Uh, 2012. And even though that's an exciting moment, we have no idea because we have consciously not been here. The last time anybody consciously was here was 12,000 years beyond that, which was some call it the fall of Atlantis right there. We enter all the dark ages. We enter dark, dark, dark. We know nothing about why we're here, nothing, but we're kind of getting it. Oh my gosh, we have computers and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Now, if we do the math, Think about this. If we do the math, 12,000 years it takes because this is the same sound wave we saw on the map of Earth. We go in life through a spring, a summer, a fall, and then a winter. The sun goes through the same seasons. And we are at spring. Nice. Equal day, equal night just starting. But if you do the math 12,000 years, if you think we're going to summer this life, unless we know how to live 6,000 years, I'm sorry everybody, we're not going to hit the summer. <laughs> but the good news is we are going to hit this new spring. And if you think about when you finally get to the line and how much time it is, imagine we got to the line, oh my god. But you can't go any farther. We're at the line. So that's what we're called at a cusp. Everybody here know about cusps? So if you're born on a cusp, you're at that weird spot between two signs. Well, we're at that weird spot between hell and heaven. <laughs> Which is why we could live on an earth where you literally have people cutting off people's heads and then there's a girl next door meditating, changing her shampoo and loving her life. And it's so weird that we live on this earth. Earth has always not been like this either. Some call this the reptile years, the dark, hidden, cold-blooded rulers. So if you want to get into it, reptilians, palladians, nice. right? Um, hell, heaven, dark, light. But we're at the point. So I don't want everybody to be like, oh my god, this guy's just weird and crazy and talking a bunch of shit. But this literally is the moment of where we move into the light. We move into the positivity. And you changing your life to be higher vibrational, I want to remind you that is the way to be, you know? And that is because we are at this time where we are moving. We are literally going. And this is going to be an awesome ride. And to go into the last three years, I don't have a slide for it. We've had something called Pluto and Uranus that have been squaring since 2012 to 2015. The last time Pluto and Uranus squared was in 1929 through 34. That was not fun. <laughs> so we're at this extreme shift point, OK? And if you co that was the Industrial Revolution. Now we're having it with the Technology Revolution, but we're all in the, the pit. we were all in the pits, and we're coming out of it, the same way we came out of the Depression, OK? But this time, we're in the light side of things instead of the dark. This time, we're all evolving and truly, finally, breaking free of all the old paradigms, all the old systems in our soul's DNA, and we're evolving into this higher new light 12,000 year cycle. It's pretty effing exciting, to be honest with you. Now, have you guys ever heard of a binary star system? So the sun and other suns 
usually have a sister or brother or lover that they revolve around too. Everything in the universe revolves around it's something. There's nothing out there in the middle of the universe by itself. I'm by myself. <laughs> We're all here, not alone. So the same cycles of the stars revolving around each other do the same thing. The peaks, the valley, the, the same summer, winter, da, da, da. On December 21st, 2012, our binary star system started coming closer to each other again instead of pulling away. We were the farthest away from the sun's energies. We literally have lived through the crappiest moment you could live through pretty much. I'm going to be honest with you guys if you think about it. We got to a point to where, I mean, I always remember the last week of December 21st, 2012, all the, the kids at the school who got shot. And I was like, well, I don't think it gets any worse than this. I, I really kind of thought that. Like, because that was the moment right before, you know? That was the moment with December 21st, right before it was at its most last dark, but it knows it's going in the light. So we're all finally moving on. But when you hit this spot, the universe has to do construction right away. It's not like we just show up and it's like, I built you the most amazing new universe. Like, it's like, you got to go build it, you know? And the last three years has been about building that bridge and that's why it's been tough for everybody and that's why they all everybody has been feeling alien and feeling like I'm awakening but it's not that it's fun but it's not fun it's let's be real you know let's just be real it's been tough it doesn't matter if you have a million dollars in the bank <sighs> tough you know it doesn't matter if you have everything in your life you can still enjoy it but there's a there's a there's a change going on within and that's uncomfortable and so we need love, we need our, our relationships, we need people, the age of Aquarius, to help us all interlock into this because without everybody else helping each other and interlocking, you're gonna feel alone. So it's forcing everybody to get together and come together and give each other hugs and love each other and realize that this new paradigm is not a Leo kingdom because that opposes Age of Aquarius, which was when Atlantis was. Atlantis was all about building this great kingdom. Aquarius is about building this great humanity that we've never known who we are, because we don't know who we are. But we are about to know. And that's why we're here, because everybody in this room had a purpose to come here and bring this new age in. So you didn't come down here to just go hang out and just live a life, I hate to say it. You came down here to help bridge this and you all have a purpose in you and unfortunately I hate to say it astrology is the way to get it so I would recommend starting to learn because it is the galaxy it is the galactic consciousness and everybody one day will have to understand it because that will be you finally leaving the shoebox and opening the lid and starting to understand what's outside the lid um, Thank you, thank you. Um, so all the ladies in the house probably love this, the new divine feminine. And that's what this is as well, is the feminine energy finally rising because unfortunately it's been suppressed for so long. And we need women because guys did a great job here, but not the best job. We need the women to do their job too. And this is definitely a time to bring that light that power, that beauty, back on the planet. And the women hold that key. And the men do, but the men need to find their femininity within themselves. Just like how women have found their masculinity, now they're having to truly let their goddess out. And so this is a time as well of the new divine feminine, which is so important to rebalance this life and truly bring out the age of Aquarius and truly bring out the world that we really need to have. You know, Because without the women, we are literally lost. We need, I think, man and woman at the helm. When I go back into my future lives, in my meditations, it's always, I'm in Palladian starships and there's always the most hottest, beautiful Palladian woman. I'm like, yeah, I'm rocking the ship next to me. I'm like, so hot. <laughs> it's true. And the Pluto-Uranus square, 1929 and 64, they conjuncted. So we're also going through this weird revolution at the same time, but then it was a time of bringing freedom. Now it's a time of like, how do we truly bring that freedom and trying to find that? 
Saturn's been in Scorpio for the last three years as well, which makes this a dark, crazy, emotional, intense aspect. So we've been going through Scorpionic times for the last two and a half years, which is trust, intimacy, connection, passion, past life fears, death, raw, truth, amazing orgasms, pleasure, darkness, privacy, secrets, exposure, naked. Welcome to your last two and a half years. <laughs> And Saturn is the timekeeper, responsibility, decisions, hard work, limitations, determination, adulthood, cold, no compassion, no sympathy, goal-oriented success. It's hard work we've been going through for the last two and a half years. And with a Pluto-Uranus square in Aries, which is a horned animal, and Capricorn, which is a horned animal, it's literally the interlocking of two animals that we've been battling inside of ourselves for the last three years. And we are coming out of that this year in 2015. Um, what time does this go? Do I have to like a 45 or something? Yes. Let's see here. I'd love to go through all the signs, but with 12 signs, it would give me one minute and I'm not gonna get there today. But I'll, I'll flash by all of your guys' beautiful souls. <laughs> Hi. Hey, you, you, hey. Oh, are we gonna get there? That was a Caddyshack thing. Um, so some fun stuff. The human body is all the, the signs, okay? The head is Aries, that's why if you ever know a Aries, they've got those heads that you know, it's their face. Tauruses are the throats. Taurus always have a nice throat. And they know their worth because they know how to project what's worthy. Geminis are the arms, so you know, Gemini. Oh my god, and then I did this. <laughs> I love my Geminis, oh my gosh. Cancer's the chest. Oh, I don't feel good. <laughs> Leo's the heart. I love you, I love you. And it's life, the sun. Virgo is the processing of your stomach. Oh my God, that did not, what is that? In that they get, there's, there's too much of this in there, and that, oh my God, there's too much salt, and there's too much, there's corn syrup in there, you know? <laughs> Whenever you know Virgo, this is going on. <laughs> the processing of the intestines. Oh wait, hold on. Um, Libra are the kidneys, so the balance beams, right? If your kidneys are off, it's no bueno. You drink too much, don't ever let a Libra drink. I hate to say it. <laughs> Once they come off those scales, they fall hard. I'm not joking either. Scorpios rule the good old penis and vagina, of course, which I'm not gonna be afraid to say it because they are the scorpions and, and we do wanna hide that. I mean, look at our bodies. I'm, I'll show you this, I'll show you that, but I won't show you this. <laughs> Literally, that's what Scorpio rules. It also represents, you know, the hidden aspect of ourself. We always hide our genitals. I don't know why, we just aren't comfortable with it this life. Um, Sagittarius rules the legs, which is the adventure to go move in life, and that's why they, if you ever see a Sag, they got a beautiful ass and legs. <laughs> because they got the horse legs, you know? <laughs> uh, Capricorn is the knees, because if you don't have good knees, you ain't climbing that mountain. You know, and they always say, I got weak knees. Oh, you probably aren't gonna make it. Oh, Aquarius are the weird ankles because they go in all, every weird direction. It's the only part of the body that kind of, and the wrists, and the aspects that go in weird angles. And Pisces are the fish. The reason why there's two fish in Pisces is on your feet, there's the top where you see life and the bottom where you don't see the other. Unconsciousness and consciousness. So you always go through Pisces world of like, oh, I know this, I feel so great. And then it's like, oh my God, I am a drug addict. Oh my God. <laughs> So there's two parts to the Pisces story always. And then there's two parts to the Gemini story, their duality, you know? Um, lunar and solar eclipses are always when, in my opinion, your life will completely change, completely. 
because that's the only thing in our earth where we physically see God talking. The ancients called these moments, I don't know what they call them, but I know they call them something awesome. <laughs> I wasn't there. Maybe I was. I don't know. But so whenever you know it's eclipse time, just prepare your life for either the big breakup, the big change in your life. Just know that pay attention in your life when these two happen. The lunar eclipse on April 4th, mark it on your calendars, guys. It's going to be gnarly. Uh, probably one of the biggest parts of this year. Solar eclipses are usually when it's all seeding and going. And then we can go into full and new moons with this. New moon is when we seed, when our emotions and our awareness come together and just, you know, whenever you have your soul and your emotions in the right place, like when you're dancing or when you're making love, you know, like it's all like synced. Oh. <laughs> but when it's full, the emotions are opposing. It's like, oh, I feel this way, but oh, I'm this way. And that's why full moons, everybody just loses it. <laughs> So pay attention to those. I always think that that's the most important. And this is my favorite slide of the night or day, wherever we're at. The magnetic field on the Earth has been getting lower and lower and lower and lower. And we are next to this huge, gigantic sun that is like so big, it's scary that we are just like a little dot. And all these flares and everything have been hitting us. And so I'm calling it the training wheels are off, you know? I also look at the sun as the projector. So just the same way, oh, I'm so glad I have a projector for today, is this is the sun, and this is all of us, because we wouldn't be here without the sun. So all of us are literally living the video of a projection. So of course we're projecting, I think. But I think we need to start paying more attention to why in the hell are we all coming the hell out of this? And does that mean that we have the way to control this from here? Or are we so stupid to think we have all the control while we're really just on the wall waiting for the next move to happen? That one will wake you up in the middle of the night. It wakes me up all the time. Because the more you awaken to this, the more I think you see, especially, we are being blasted more and more by raw, literally, it's almost like the sun is like spinning on us. Here, have some more of my stuff. <laughs> or he's peeing on us, <laughs> you know, whatever you want to think. We are getting blasted, blasted, pure consciousness in us, or the story is getting brighter, and it's getting even hotter, and it's getting more intense and more intense and more intense, and this is getting even more, but I think we always need to remember that we come out of the projector, we're not separate from it. I think that we get so caught up in like, well, I'm this human being and I'm like, I'm me, you know? But I think if you just like look at the way that light hits everything, it would all be completely dark without the sun. There'd be nothing. There'd be zero. Literally, there'd be nothing. I mean, look at when it's nighttime. If we had no lights, it'd be completely dark. You wouldn't even be able to see in front of you. That's the truth. So it's so important to remember that if you don't understand him, the same way the Bible says if you don't know him, don't know the son. There's a guy called Santos Bonacci, and I'll give him the props. He'll watch this on the video. Santos! <laughs> he is a person, he is a literally, he used to be a Jehovah's Witness who cracked the Bible and then realized that the whole Bible is just the story of astrology. <laughs> no joke. And every major religion is based off the sun, of course, if you watch any of the old zeitgeists and all that stuff. But I, I think to break it down in reality, let's just be real here, folks. No, it's not coming from here. It's coming from there. And so there's no way to think that, it's, it's too weird for me. It kind of blows my mind because I'm still on the fence of the free will. I know we have free will, but the more I have followed astrology, my whole dreams have come true by just allowing, like I won't sign a contract on a Mercury retrograde, I won't do that, and my life has gone, if you know my life, TV shows everything, every dream has manifested in my life because I followed this. I let God be the ruler. I don't let myself be the ruler anymore. And I think once you do that, and we could just say this on a very basic level, 
let God and the universe just rule your life. And I think that's all. The, and this is just another way to look at it. And I think we all know that because we're in this room. That, we, that that power already knows what to do. And we don't know it. So we might as well just let it happen. And astrology is about understanding where it's going, why you're here, what it's doing. And the new age is the awareness, because the age of Aquarius, which I hate that song, so like Disneyland, which I love Disneyland, but I don't like small world, it's a little creepy, <laughs> um, is the new age of humanity, which humanity doesn't know itself. Imagine if humans were to go into space right now, and all these aliens, they were all in the same suit, same color and everything, and then there's all these aliens, it's like, yo, dude, what up? And then it's like, no, no, be polite. Humans are having to find who they are. We're all scattered into all these people, and we look at people by color and all this shit, and that's just waste of time. We are all human beings, and there is a core of the human being that we all have that we haven't found yet, and that's what we're all looking for right now. So that's what the New Age to me is about, and I guess I'll take a couple questions. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The, uh, Sam Harris. Have you ever looked at Sam Harris online? He's proving, even though he's an atheist kind of way of looking at it. Like, if I were to ask you what's your favorite movie, you are only going to pick the movies that you've seen. Yeah. You're not going to actually choose anything that you haven't seen. So do you really have free will, or are you only just choosing what you've already seen? Hmm. Uh huh. And I wanted to ask you because my sort of confusion or is that, you know, one was a Vedic astrologist, one uh -huh. was a Kabbalistic astrologist, and then there's Western astrology. And I'm definitely like in line with like a lot of astrology and stuff, but how do you know which one is the right one or the. I think it's about knowing all astrology. So knowing what Vedic is, knowing what Western is, and knowing how it works. Because Western is the understanding of a geo chart in the understanding of the sun's ecliptic path. So that science is how I applied it to what the galaxy is doing, and so that understands how the galaxy works. Vedic is understanding where in the story that is, hence the age of Aquarius comes from us knowing through Vedic astrology that on March 20th, the sun is starting to come into Aquarius out of Pisces. That's why it's so 26 degrees, 27 degrees off, is because we're sh shifting our view because every you know, Earth's axis keeps wobbling and we keep seeing a different view. So it's not that I think it's what's right and what's wrong because they all come together. Uh, for your personal story, I would say it's about knowing both. Like, I'm a Leo in Western, but let's be real. I have a lot of cancer qualities. I'm an I'm a early Leo, but I'm an emotional Leo crazy ah, guy. <laughs> So I think it's about combining it all and learning that the universe is synchronistic and how to everybody sync. How does it all connect? And I think if you see that presentation again in your head, which this will be on YouTube, on my YouTube channel, this is, once you know that, you can combine that in everything. It's like the code of the universe. The uni the astrology is the code of the universe to me. It's like, once you crack that code, you can apply it to everything. Once you know all 12 signs, all 12 conscious states, you can apply it to everything and know your whole life story and know the planets and know, I mean, the Greeks knew this was the battle of the gods with the planets. And we all were witnesses of it. We didn't change it. We were all witnesses. And, I, and I, another thing is I think we're the witness of this life. We're the observer with all the senses to feel the most amazing movie ever told. I don't think that we, in many ways, I think that, the, I hate to say it, but I, I know we're creating it, but at the same time, I think by being here, but I don't know if we're fully creating it either. But I can't, I, I'll, be, I'll be an idiot to say that I know the truth. I don't. 
But that's why I did this presentation today to kind of open that Pandora's box to see what everybody else thinks and what I'm working on every day and what I work through in astrology. Because let's be real, I do like thousands of astrology readings and how in the hell did I know that you're going through the worst moment of your life when you come to me without even you saying a word. I don't ever let anybody in astrology reading tell me what they want, where they're going, or why they're talk calling me. I literally just go, let me see your chart and I'll tell you what the universe has to say. Boom, 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 boom. There it is. And I think that trips me out because how do I know that? if you're creating it. So that's something to think about. Um, kind of crazy, right? Mm -hmm. So are you wrapping up your lecture, you're saying our destiny, are we going to study our nodes then? Or how do we really get a little closer to that? I think getting closer is by opening the whole universal story. Understanding science is very important, but combining that with metaphysical art. So I think the same way that we had Comet Ellen in do you guys remember that in 2012 that came in? Did that bring in the new age? They don't write that in a book. So I think it's more about just finding a way to trust your embedded self and maybe reading the book Bringers of the Dawn. Anybody read that in here? Everything's embedded within you as a human being. So all the story, all the universe, everything, because you're the observer, you can go back from in there and all the information's in there. It's not by researching and reading up here. It's by just going back and remembering that all the information comes from here and it's all there and it's all waiting for you and you have the answer. All psychics are doing are just really good at remembering the answers. They're not hearing a ghost over here being like, she has problems. <laughs> They're not doing that at all. They're literally just being like picking up on the energy that's already embedded in, in within you. The same way that when I knew Common Elodin was coming in in the summer of 2012, I'm like, holy shit, the new age is fucking here. <laughs> you know? So yeah. So anyways, well, thank you for coming and thank you for my neurotic presentation, but I appreciate it. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Oh, thank you. What's your name? Uh, David. David? So what's your YouTube channel? Uh, the Leo King. Okay, because you weren't on the... Uh... Yeah, they, they put me in here last minute. Awesome. So what's yeah. your rising and what's your moon? Uh, Leo rising... So you're just, no wonder. And moon in Taurus. Okay. So you told the Leo Huh? Oh! <laughs> Hey, hey. I'm eating my reading last year. Oh, hey, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm good. Okay. Feeling Hi. crazy a little bit, but... It's such a great lecture. Oh, thank you. you. I hear something crazy? Hmm. Quickly. I was looking for you on the schedule, couldn't find you. I was like, well, can't find him. I'm just going to go listen to this past life person. Working, you're in here. I was like... That's here beautiful. I know. How have you been? Everything going well? Yeah. Wonderful. It's crazy. It's good. I'm good. excited. I feel focused on astrology. Wow. Well, thank you for coming. Yeah. That means a lot to me. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm, I appreciate it. How are you? It's been kind of crazy for me. Yeah. I just got off a tour around America and then I came home and then I launched my apps and now I'm doing like 30 videos a week. Mm -hmm. And then I've been jumping on e-television and BET and all the main networks doing astrology and it's been like crazy. I'm like losing it a little bit. Yeah. And I'm having a hard aspect in my chart. I had Saturn opposing my moon, I had Jupiter squaring my moon, so my emotions and my comfort levels are just gone. I don't even feel comfortable in every moment. I'm just like, ugh. Oh. Yeah, I can't relate to that. And we're in the middle of the grand finale of the universe's entrance into the new age and I think we're all waiting for this fireworks show, and, I'm, and I know it's coming, and I'm a little... I'm not nervous, but I feel neurotic a little bit. Like, I just feel like, oh my God, it's coming, and I, I'm trying to keep it all together. Oh, I knew I was gonna ask you. Do you feel crazy about